The following program is a UNC Charlotte production. Welcome inside UNC Charlotte. First up on today's program, we'll learn about the First Citizens Bank Scholars Medal Award. And this year's recipient, Dr. Craig Ogle, the Charles H. Stone Professor of Chemistry. UNC Charlotte Jr. Timothy Mulligan recently directed the documentary film Hope in an effort to raise money and awareness for brain cancer research. We'll learn more about the film and hear from Tim about his inspiration. We'll hear what the Army ROTC program on campus offers to students and how it has an everlasting benefit in every graduate's life. Plus, the 37th annual 49er Club golf outing was a recent success for 49er athletics bringing new and old sponsors together in supporting the Charlotte 49ers Athletic Foundation. All this and more inside UNC Charlotte. The First Citizens Bank Scholars Medal Award honors exceptional UNC Charlotte faculty scholarship and research. This year's recipient is the Charles H. Stone Professor of Chemistry, Dr. Craig Ogle. I guess uh you know, I had opportunities to work in a chemistry lab when I was a kid, really a kid. And on Saturdays, I would often go in um, in my father's lab and experiment. I can't say anything other than experiment. There was no real purpose, but just to go and uh, see what would happen. It's a fascinating thing to be able to go in, oh, let's see what happens. And I, I um, still kind of do that today. I liken it sometimes to turning over rocks and seeing what's under it. That natural curiosity he discovered in his father's lab proved vital in providing a career philosophy Ogle still follows today. Never do something you don't first understand. It was that mantra that led Ogle to employ and refine a unique yet sparsely used research technique called Rapid Injection Nuclear Magnetic Resonance, or RINMR, a technique that ultimately transformed his career and allowed him to shed light on reactions that were never truly understood. I had a, um, a technique that I learned in Switzerland as a postdoc, and when I came to UNC Charlotte, um, we set up uh, a system to, to reproduce that. We call it rapid injection NMR, and it has some really nice features. It, it incorporates NMR spectroscopy, um, which is probably the most powerful general tool for identifying organic chemicals, what they actually are. Not too many people use this method, so there's maybe a couple of other labs in, in the whole United States that have this capability. And so they have an NMR instrument, probably every chemistry program has this, but what he's been able to do is to actually modify the instrument. Okay, so what he can do is he has a special system so that he can take um, a, a vial, put it into the NMR instrument, and then while it's in the instrument, add something else and allow a reaction to occur at a very low temperature. And so therefore what you can do is you can actually monitor the reaction in the instrument as opposed to only looking at the end product, which is what most, most people do. So if you can understand what those details are and control the reactions better, you can increase the yield of the product you want, decrease side reactions, maybe use cheaper materials. Using the RI-NMR technique, Ogle, along with his collaborator Steve Burtz, Mike Murphy, and his student research team, collectively have made an indelible mark on the world of synthetic organic chemistry. Copper compounds are central to the production of many useful organic molecules, such as pharmaceuticals. Although copper three intermediates were presumed to be important in copper promoted reactions, their identification and reactivity eluded researchers for decades, making copper chemistry somewhat unpredictable. So these compounds have been proposed, but nobody's been able to prove that they exist. And what he's been able to do is to actually see them in the NMR instruments and then study how they actually react. It's a eureka moment that came over you know, several weeks, there wasn't anything, oh, there it is. Um, you know, I think when we first saw the copper three intermediate, we didn't know what it was. And I, I believe we probably took three months to, to get around to figuring out what it was. And then 
of course, uh, I mean, at that point you're ready to tell the world about it, and, and we did. I think it's also impressive with how Craig is able to do this very sophisticated work here at UNC Charlotte. Okay? And, and he's able to do it because he actually gets in there and does the work as well. Um, he mentors people so that you know, they, they're undergraduates or graduate students, but then they're actually making very important contributions to this work. He has a very dedicated group of students. Some of these students stay in his group start as very early in their undergraduate research and, and continue sometimes through, you know, through the master's program and work long hours and almost every day of the week and basically inspired by his example. You know, he's molded me as a scientist, basically. And I think everything I do has a background in how he's trained me as a scientist and how, how I think about you know, scientific, approaching a scientific problem. He's really been key in kind of helping me along, trying to figure out what it is that I really want to do with my academics and with my career. And I couldn't have asked for a better mentor to kind of transition me from these classes to grad level type of research. I look at him now as almost like my chemistry father. He, he was the one who guided me through and just really helped me out along the way and it's, it's been great. I feel like the students are a major product. Um, even in our research, the students are what comes out of that and, and uh, you're leading them in their scientific curiosity and how to become uh, scientists. A measure of someone's ability as a mentor is really reflected not really by what the person says about themselves but what you see their students actually doing. He didn't treat me for example, he doesn't treat anybody else who's new to the lab or who's been in the lab for a long time any differently than he would one of his professional peers. He expects you to be on the level that he wants his grad students to be on and as an undergrad I think it's great because it's very rare to get that kind of opportunity and that kind of interaction with the professor at an undergrad level, especially in a big institution. He definitely tries to uh, foster an environment where we're creative, we have freedoms of creativity. If we want to try something, we try it. If, if it fails, it fails. Um, but in doing that, we, we learn from our failures and we, we can progress as scientists in that way. He identifies talents in people and he gets them interested in what he's doing. And, and he also gives them a lot of credit for what they do as well. So he definitely thanks them and, you know, anytime there's a publication, their name's on the paper as well because they contributed to it. I share this award with my many collaborators and my many students and, you know, in fact, um, I the chemistry department. I mean, without the facilities and the support from the chemistry department, the university, none of this could happen. And, uh, but it is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be building careers and teach them how to investigate. And, and I think this is what we've been doing. UNC Charlotte junior Timothy Mulligan recently directed the documentary film Hope. In 2012, Timothy's mother Jenny was diagnosed with brain cancer. In an effort to raise money and awareness for brain cancer research, her sister Maria biked from California to Maryland in the race across America. Timothy and his brother Charlie and a few close friends documented that journey and turned the story into a full-length film. 3,000 Miles to a Cure is an organization that I helped begin in October of 2012 after I discovered that my mom was diagnosed with brain cancer. My aunt, myself, my brother, and a few of our closest friends decided that we really needed to do something to go against the terrible thing that we had discovered about my mom, that she really didn't have long to live and that there weren't that many options for what we could do about it. The mission of 3,000 Miles to a Cure is to raise funds for research to end brain cancer by extending an invitation to unite and hope and action for the cure. For me, that looks like contributing all the free time I have and talking to all of my friends and really getting passionate about all the different opportunities we have to create a really cool project, a really cool organization to find that cure. And the, one of the ways that we've been doing that is through a project called Hope. It's a documentary film, a full-length documentary film about my aunt's journey across America. 
My aunt is a world record endurance bicyclist. Uh, she helped us co-found the organization. In June of 2013, she set out to set a world record by racing across America in the race across America. As I've started working on this project, this film project, several other students at UNC Charlotte have really been a big part of that. Some of my closest friends go to school here and have really helped us from the ground up build a really solid understanding of how to be effective on social media or how to build a really good film, even if it takes a really small team of hardworking individuals. My brother, who is also a co-founder of 3000 Miles to a Cure, helped start the organization. He's uh, graduated a few years ago and he's now in finance, but he's used those skills that he's built up while here at UNC Charlotte to help us build a strong foundation for 3000 Miles to a Cure. Being a student here at UNC Charlotte and being the director of a documentary film aren't, isn't an easy thing to balance. It's taken a lot of work and time management skills to be able to do it, but I feel really grateful for the fact that a lot of what I've been doing while working on the film has really carried over to my studies here at UNC Charlotte. This film means more to me than I can really describe because it's been the product of year, over a year of work of filming and recording and traveling and editing and post-production and writing meetings and gathering everyone together and really I feel lucky because much of what we got to do was film my mom and work with my mom and talk to my mom and get really her essence and her character and her personality captured on film that I'm really thankful that I'll be able to take with me forever and whether this film ends up being the most famous film in the world or just something that I get to watch in 20 years and remember what was important to my mom and remember what was important to my aunt at that time and that's really the most important thing to me. I'm a cyclist and an athlete and I've been doing you know running and cycling events for a long time and I uh, and I ride a recumbent bike and for fun for a few years I've been setting records on it. September 27th, 2012, I was diagnosed with brain cancer. Once Jenny was diagnosed, uh, I wanted to do something hard, something to hit back, really. So we decided to race across America. But uh, yeah, no, I wanted to win. We get a lot of benefit from the community that provides their time, talent, and treasures for us, and we benefit from that greatly, and this is just a way for us to reciprocate and, and give back and to be interconnected with, with Charlotte and the community. Since 1946, we've been serving this community, and so it's in our DNA, and they've, you know, the community's given so much to UNC Charlotte, we need to give back. The Belt College of Business is coming out here to just be a helpful hand in the community. A bunch of us have gotten together with the alumni council and we're out here just trying to make a difference for the teachers that impact our students every day. 
if I can do anything to help these dogs um, and kind of get some of the weight off of the current volunteers and staff shoulders, um, that that's something that I feel is important to do. As an employee, I want to make a difference in our community, and this is a great opportunity to come out with some UNC Charlotte colleagues that I know and some that I don't know, and make a difference. Well, especially for the campus cleanup, it's really important to get students involved and aware of what's going on and to also make UNC Charlotte a cleaner place. Events like this allow students to be invested in our campus a little bit more, which kind of develops a community sense, which is something we're really striving to build. The importance of the students coming out to volunteer is that this is their campus, and the more they take care of it, the more they help keep it green, the more they have a stake in their own campus, and that's the most important part about the campus cleanup. I think everyone in, the, uh, in a community should give back to that community to make it a better place for everyone. I come out because it's fun to do. We have a great group of people every time I come and I enjoy doing good for the community. It's important as a student because I feel that when you go out to volunteer, you get to know your community and you get to reach out and help. I try to do volunteer work whenever I can. I do some outside of the school as well, but working with the school, we try to connect with the community as much as possible. I wanted to be out here with uh, UNC Charlotte and Belt College Business uh, as alumni and give back to the community at the same time. The reason I'm out here today is because uh, I feel as a student, I should give back to the community. I am. 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 I am a UNC Charlotte volunteer. ROTC is open to anyone on campus, anyone who wants to try out, but we look for the same principles that we try and develop in each individual person that's based on a scholar, athlete, and leader. The UNC Charlotte ROTC Battalion thrives on three principles as a scholar, an athlete, and a leader. So those are the keys to success. The biggest thing we harp on are academics here at the battalion, so having a high GPA is one of the biggest priorities while you're in the battalion. The second thing is an athlete, which is something that we can develop over the four years. You go to PT at least three times a week in the morning, and you slowly begin to develop into a well-rounded athlete. Uh, the last component that we talk about is leadership. This is a, another component of the model that we can develop over the four years, but the biggest thing is, is being able to effectively lead the troops that you will eventually lead when you get either on active duty into the National Guard or the Reserves. You cannot effectively lead if you're not scholarly and you're not an athlete, which is why we put those two things first. So as a cadet in the battalion, you also have the opportunity to win scholarships, either two, three, or four-year scholarships. The four-year scholarships are often gifted to those coming straight out of high school, a lot of times from a junior ROTC program from a local high school. But the two, three, and four year scholarships pays for all the academic needs throughout the academic four years and also gives you the ability to partake in all of the ROTC activities. So one of the benefits as a cadet in the battalion is over the summer you may have the opportunity to travel overseas. We have what's called a cultural immersion program that sends you to a country of your choosing and puts you into the economy or puts you into the local population to really get an understanding of what that culture is all about. 
Uh, I went on one myself two summers ago to El Salvador, and it is quite often an eye-opener to many of the students here in the battalion, and it's excellent real-world experience, not only for military life, but if you wanted a civilian job after as well. The program is also going to test you in time management skills, and that's one of the biggest keys to success is being able to prioritize your work, and that will actually be very beneficial once you get out of college and into regular Army. Well, my day typically starts at 0500. Uh, we have Ranger Challenge PT. Uh, from there, we go to class all day, do homework, come in at night, usually relax a little bit and repeat Monday through Friday. Uh, ROTC class for us is uh, military science. It's generally about two hours. And, um, you know, we just try to delegate, manage our lives as best as possible between uh, work, school, or an ROTC. So getting through the program and actually commissioning into the United States military not only sets you up for success immediately after college, but if you decide to go into the civilian sector after your military career, it gives you an up on 99% of the United States population. Only 1% or less than 1% of the U.S. population actually serves in the military and it sets you apart from everyone else in that stack of resumes. Going through the ROTC program here at the battalion at UNC Charlotte, we also do a lot of community relations events. One good example is we had several cadets volunteer during the inaugural football season and we were part of the recycling program. Um, other examples of the outreach we do is we're starting to volunteer in the annual campus cleanup where we'll have several cadets go out and help with the green initiative on campus and cleaning and repairing whatever they need to do across the campus. Everything we do should have a bigger purpose than just personal development. We like to have a positive impact on the community around us at UNC Charlotte. And what's great about it is everything that you do for the community will have a bigger impact on who you are as a person and how you personally develop than you probably realize. The ROTC program here at UNC Charlotte has helped me develop into the person I am today and will continue to benefit me for the rest of my life. In the Human Computer Interaction Lab, we're interested in making computers more usable for people. That's sort of the traditional um, approach, but it's more than that. It's not just making them faster or easier to learn. It's also making them more pleasurable, exciting, expressive, that type of thing. So that could be software, hardware, um, and it spans all different domains, arts and productivity applications and so on. So we're interested in the people side of computing. The thing about computer science in general and human computer interaction specifically is that it is very, very creative. People tend to think of computer science and programming and coding as, oh, you sit in this room and you sit at this computer and you do this thing all by yourself and it's, it's really dull and so on. Um, I work with a lot of people all the time, but I also get to be creative. I get to build things using my computer that other people can use and those things didn't exist before and if I hadn't built them, they wouldn't exist. So I get to create things um, and to me, you just, you can't beat that. The 37th annual 49er Club Golf Outing was a recent success for 49er Athletics, bringing new and old sponsors together and supporting the Charlotte 49ers Athletic Foundation. Well, today is definitely a fundraiser. It's the 37th annual uh, fundraising golf tournament that we have for the Athletic Foundation, and all monies raised goes to athletic scholarships and in support of our athletic programs. And uh, we have so many returning players; it's, it's phenomenal. Uh, they'll come up and they say, "Remember me?" And I'm, I'm like, "Welcome! So glad you're here!" And they're like, "Oh, I play in this every year." And I think it's it's an event that has garnered a lot of respect from people in the community. They enjoy it. And we've been challenged by weather almost every year in some shape, form, or fashion. Very windy last year, but we know the rain's going to hold off today and we're going to have a, a great event. We're very excited to be at the 37th Annual 49er Club Golf Outing. 
We have a full field today and uh, we're going to raise hopefully about $65,000 for the Student Athlete Scholarship Fund at UNC Charlotte. Mecklenburg Valve Source is back again, uh, second time as the title sponsor, so we're very excited about that. And then we have three great presenting sponsors, Coca-Cola, Edifice, and Blue Dot Ready Mix. For us, for, for Mecklenburg, we've only been in business for three years, but prior to that, uh, we were Lee Valve, and our uh, owner at that time had always been involved very much with this, and so when we took over, uh, we decided that sponsorship was the best way to go for us because um, you know we wanted to to put our put our you know fingerprints on the community a little bit with with the uh, UNCC athletic program and uh, it's been good for us. We've uh, we, we enjoy the uh, sponsorship aspect of it and helping out the community in the same time. It truly is a, a, a community effort uh, to make this happen and make it as popular as it is. Our staff works really hard to, to make the atmosphere good and we've had it at Pine Island here for several years and great atmosphere and they built this little facility next door to us to take care and get us out of the wind for the meals and things beforehand. We'll take this weather compared to some of the years we've had. We've had uh, freezing temperatures, we've had gale force winds, so a little overcast and not too cold today. We'll, we'll make it work. Having it at Pine Island is, is a plus for a lot of reasons. Uh, uh, the owners of this, Larry Griffin Jr., played on our golf team at UNC Charlotte, and uh, uh, he's a true 49er, and they make sure that everything is done top-notch here. There is no question. There's not a need that, that goes unmet. Uh, and just everyone is so cordial in the atmosphere. All the employees make sure that it's a special event for everybody participating in this tournament. Thanks for joining us once again. You can see more on the web at inside.uncc.edu. And all of our segments are on YouTube. In the meantime, we look forward to seeing you next time right here inside UNC Charlotte. Thank you.